Hello Internet, welcome to Network Analysis Tutorial Series. In this comprehensive tutorial series, I'd like to cover the basics of network analysis and at a later stage, we'll cover network synthesis also. Now, before we start working on real life problems of network analysis, in this tutorial, I'd like to introduce you to what networks are and what what elements uh, comprise of a network. If we talk about electrical network, it consists of various elements interconnected uh, in, a, in a rather complicated way so as to perform certain functions at certain certain points. For example, if we want to study network analysis, we should be aware of what all network elements are we likely to encounter. The network elements are classified into two categories. Active elements and passive elements. Active elements, they are the voltage sources and the current sources. Passive elements are resistors, capacitors, and inductors. And the beauty of this subject is that we are going to encounter only these elements when, whenever a network is made. Uh, these these elements will constitute 99% of the times of our networks, of our simple electrical networks. Some other elements like diodes, transistors, they constitute as constituent elements in a network, but we are not going to analyze those in our basic network analysis series. We'll be talking about these linear elements we'll be talking about DC and AC voltage sources and current sources and in passive elements we are going to talk about resistors, capacitors and inductors. Now what is the difference between these two? In any network you'll find these elements they perform certain functions. Active elements perform the function of supplying energy to the network whereas passive elements perform the function of consuming that energy. A typical example of a network is something like this. Now, if we were to classify the elements in this network, we would say that this network has two active elements with a voltage source and a current source and it has six passive elements. There are three resistors, two inductors, and one capacitor. And all these elements 
are joined by wires and all these elements are connected in branches some of them are in parallel to each other we'll study about branches and nodes in later lectures or tutorials when we study Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law but as an introduction to network elements we would say that an interconnection of all these elements in in a complicated way that makes some meaning some sense would make up a network now for example the network that I've drawn an example network this network can be thought of as a network where two active elements are supplying energy to our load we can assign the branch right in the middle as our load branch so what is happening here is there are two sources which are driving this load so we are trying to perform some function we are trying to attach some electrical instrument that we want to run in this branch in this area and in, and in order to make that instrument work we are supplying energy to that instrument and while doing so we would also want some kind of a con some kind of control over our supplied power that is why we have put in some controlling and limiting elements in the branches which are containing the sources so that is how we need to interpret a network and one one more thing that one needs to take care of while studying networks is that even if we have a voltage source connected in a network it is going to supply energy to the network via dispensing current to the branch in simpler words if we have a voltage source connected here by virtue of these passive elements and by virtue of the most fundamental law the ohms law it is going to generate some current which it is going to dispense in the branch and the current sources are simple enough to dispense the current which uh, which is specified on on the label of the current they're carrying so in other words if this current source has a label of 2 ampere so it is going to supply or dispense current of 2 ampere in its immediate connecting branch of course when this current passes through this node it has to make choices where it will divide itself into two parts in certain ratios and same happens with this current when it comes to this node it divides itself into two parts but the fundamental key point is uh, current is the key parameter which flows in branches so if we are able to calculate current in each of the branches in a network then 
we should be able to calculate how much energy is being dissipated because we have another formula for power dissipation which essentially requires the current as one of its calculating parameter and so our main focus should be to be very very conversant with the fact that the passive elements are here to dissipate the energy which are being generated by the active elements and that dissipation of energy by these passive elements in various branches can only be found if we are able to find the current in the branches and in network analysis we have different techniques or methods to calculate the parameters and most of the times, 99% of the times, the parameter which needs to be calculated in order to find the voltage drop or the power dissipated is the current. So there are different methods or techniques in network analysis that can help you do so. For example, we have superposition theorem then we have nodal analysis which is based on Kirchhoff's current law then we have mesh analysis which is based on Kirchhoff's voltage law then we have Thevenin's theorem and Norton's theorem now if I were to calculate the current in the load branch if I were to calculate I X in the load branch for this particular network network analysis gives me a provision to calculate it via five different methods now it's up to us to judge which method suits which network the best and as we progress and as we practice analyzing the networks more and more we become more aware of the application of these techniques in particular networks so in the coming five tutorials we are going to study all these different techniques in detail which will help us find the currents in the branches for any particular network and once current is found in a particular branch we can calculate all of the parameters like maximum power dissipated and so on and so forth so this was an introductory lecture or tutorial to what we should ex expect in network analysis we should be very very familiar with the properties of voltage sources current sources resistors capacitors and inductors for example when voltage sources are connected in series or when they are connected in parallel what do they result and similarly we want all the formulas to be on tips for resistor capacitor and inductors we should be very familiar with the working and theory of all the passive elements all these elements they oppose the flow of the current to some extent resistors are going to oppose direct current capacitors and inductors are going to oppose alternating current so 
the opposition offered by resistors and induct uh, capacitors and inductors is known as reactance so time and again all these basic things will will come into picture when we solve network anal when we solve various networks so this was all for the introduction and i hope this tutorial was helpful and stay tuned for more tutorials on network analysis stay tuned for the next five tutorials where we discuss these network analysis methods for solving networks thank you so much for watching the video have a good day and a good life bye bye